Okay, welcome back guys. Um, sorry, I know the videos are coming out a little bit slow at the moment, um, but that's because I still have uni. Everything is online at the moment because of coronavirus, which really sucks, but it's also um, kind of convenient in some sense because I can work while watching my lectures simultaneously, which is cool. Um, so speaking of work, what we're going to do today is we're going to be restoring this old heater box for the Barracuda because I want to put this in um, first when the body comes back so that's out of the way and also it's easier to do this first and then put the dash over it than it is to put in the dash and put this underneath. Um, before we get to that, um, well while we're speaking about that, um, we're gonna do a time lapse for the rest of this video basically so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do much talking only at the end I'll recap a few things. Um, but yeah, before we get to that, uh, I just wanted to show you some work that I've done on the Regal. So I finally fixed the heater in this car as well. Um, so I just replaced the hoses. But down here, um, the bottom hose, I made bridge off a T-piece so that I can add another temp sender. Um, because the stock gauges are just stripes uh, as you can see here it is just stripes so you have no clue what the temperature actually is um, but now I do because I have another gauge with actual temperature and it is hooked up to the lights it will only come on um, if I like use the lights I mean well it's light itself but you know um, the temperature works on ignition uh, but yeah that's about it now I can actually see what temperature my car is running at um, and I have heat in the winter as you can see there is a little uh, stop valve in the hot line that's because when I flushed out the little heater core um, the valve in essence the like heater shut off valve or heater control valve um, started leaking which sucks so I don't want to fiddle about with that it's going to stay open and then in the summer the valve in the engine bay will be closed and in the winter it will be open um, as simple as that so that's about it just wanted to show you that um, but now we'll get on to this baby and uh, yeah stay tuned Right, so um, I actually forgot the GoPro's memory card in my laptop at home, so no time lapse. But uh, here it is, disassembled. Um, it just has like two panels basically you can remove, and you can remove the heater core. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's quite disgusting. Um, a rat decided to make itself comfortable in here for God knows how long. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna clean this out. And then I'm probably going to sandblast this entire thing. Um, I'll just have to be careful so that I don't blast it apart because it is quite thin sheet metal. Um, then I'll probably remake this out of cardboard later or something. Not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Um, but I'm going to take this radiator, um, the little heater core, and soak it in vinegar in essence so that it can loosen up all the gunk that has solidified inside without actually damaging anything um, then I'm gonna try to remove the fan from here I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that because I need to drill out those rivets as you can see one broke but uh, yeah I'm not sure how I'm gonna drill them out with the actual fan rotor in the way because I'm not sure how I'm gonna remove that yet but uh, yeah I'll figure that out remove that and then sandblast everything and uh, then it can get painted again so luckily not much fixing needed um, just needs to be made pretty again and then I need to replace the heater control valve because as you can see like uh, <laughs> it's basically completely jammed with junk so I don't think I'm gonna be able to salvage that one but uh, yeah that's about it so Stay tuned again. Sorry for no time lapse footage. Okay, so update my hands are absolutely busted because I tried to get this little fan off of this shaft. Now, ideally, you'd think, like, hey, just like pull it off, but no, it has like this little collar that slips over this and bites it to the shaft right so you need to like push this off with a screwdriver in there where there isn't a lot of space and uh, then you need to like smash it out so I used the heat gun to heat it up and then I smashed it out but yeah that was very difficult so I figured while I'm at it 
um, I might as well open up the motor, uh, clean it out, uh, re-lubricate the stuff and then um, reassemble it. Luckily the bushes, um, well sorry the brushes, they still have a lot of meat on them so they should be fine for the next 50 years. I'm not going to replace them now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do some modifications to make this easier for if I have to do it in the future again. Um, because the entire reason I had to do this in the first place is in order to get the motor out of this thing because like you can't get it out with a fan attached and stuff because I didn't want to sandblast this while the motor is still attached. That would have been a terrible idea. So uh, yeah, I'm going to clean this up, reassemble it and then probably sandblast this stuff. Oh, also I like made a template out of paper for like how this should be. Um, so I'll like get some material to remanufacture that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else to report, so I'll see what's next. So I'm rinsing the little heater core and um, I've let it sit for a while with some vinegar. Now look at all this shit that's coming out of there. Ah. Oh, that's fucking gross. Ugh. Yeah, that's about 50 years worth of nastiness. So probably gonna be here a while. It took me about almost an hour to rinse out um, my Regal's heater core. So yeah, quickly gonna do this. So this is all the dirt and rust and crap that has accumulated in the heater core. And this is just the first flush, so let's see how it goes. Remember to flush your heater core, guys, especially if you haven't used them in a while. Okay, and it is done. Here it is, the heater box of a Barracuda, restored in all of its glory. Now, um, the only thing left to do is get a new heater control valve and slap it on here. Couldn't find one in Namibia, so I'll have to order that. Um, yeah, what else is there to say? You basically saw everything I did. Um, if you paid attention, you would have seen I only sandblasted the exterior of the little box and painted that because the powder coating type of paint they used on the interior was still in a good condition. Um, I just washed everything out with soapy water before I put it back together. Um, to get the plastics nice and black again, uh, I just washed them as well and then rubbed in some of this tire dressing. Um, it gives them that good old look again, um, fresh out of a factory. So yeah, I also replaced the foam on this little flap thing. I replaced the foam around the heater. I replaced the little uh, cardboard thing. This one was a bit messed up. I used this like type of stiff styrofoam, if you will. You can get that at your like stationary stores. Um, oh, also replaced the foam on the inside of this little door. And while we're here, let me just like uh, boast a little and uh, highlight the attention to detail I pay when assembling this. Yes, that is gold allen bits with stainless lock nuts. And yes, I tapered the foam around the edges so that when you do close this little door, it doesn't peel out around it. 
so uh, yeah that's about it i don't cut corners as you can see everything's done properly um the only thing i still need to do is the wiring i'll do that once i have a wiring harness in um, i just need to put a new terminal on that resistor and just like um splice in the red here for another terminal and then connect one to the black but yeah uh, that's about it so i know this video might not have been the most exciting one um but i hope you guys enjoyed it regardless I'm quickly going to the farm for the weekend, so I'm not going to get anything done now um, until next week. However, next week I'm hopefully getting the shell back from the spray shop. So, uh, yeah, that would be an exciting episode. Then we can just like start slapping together all the panels because I might be going back to university soon. Um, so then all the panels are out of the way and safe. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and stay tuned for the next one. Have a good one. Cheers. Right, so just to have some video evidence of this, but uh, when I say nuts and bolt restoration, I really do mean nuts and bolt restoration. Look at this, golden allen bolts with lock nuts, and you're never even going to see this? Why? Why not? Do it properly, guys. Don't skip corners.